Hey, 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 good people. How y'all doing? It's your wellness friend, Tyra, with Inspired Life, where driven kingdom women are encouraged to live fully in the mind, in the body, and in the spirit. Listen, holistic wellness is my jam, and I delight in equipping driven kingdom women with practical strategies for holistic living. Hey, friends, thank you all for joining. Listen, we in for a treat tonight. We are in part three of my wellness conversation series. This is a beautiful series. If you missed any of the pieces of this series, you can find the first two on my YouTube page because the Bible has a lot to say about healing. But sometimes, <laughs> being the people that we are, we can take our healing into our own hands, okay? So for the first two parts of this series, we've covered some juicy topics, the things that Christians are thinking about regarding healing, but maybe that no one is talking about. So in part one of the series, I was joined by a women's wellness coach, Sandrell, and Sandrell and I talked about the dangers, okay, the dangers of being desperate. And how when we're desperate to heal, we may do some things out of alignment. We may do some things that are not in alignment with God's word. We can get ourselves in some trouble on a slippery slope. Then with part two, I was joined by my sweet sister, Marie. Marie, thank you for joining us today. Jumping in here, Marie at Kingdom Health and Wellness. And Marie and I talked about some of the things you thinking about, but maybe are not talking about. We talked about, is yoga okay for Christians? Is Reiki okay for Christians? We had a juicy conversation. So you can catch both of those conversations, like I said, on my YouTube page. And this didn't even start out as a series. It just started out with me over the last year, turning a lot of this stuff over in my head and just wondering, God, you know, what would you have me to do with this healing piece what healing modalities are okay for me as a certified natural health professional i have spent a lot of time studying researching examining many different healing modalities some of those are in alignment with my faith some of those might be contrary to my faith some of them are very complementary things like essential oils right Things like um, the laying on of hands. So there are some practices that are complementary to my faith. But then there are others that have been a little bit of a slippery slope. So I have chosen to lean into the Holy Spirit to know what I should touch and what I should keep my hands off of. Because for me, I want to be walking in paths of righteousness for his namesake. So here we are. Three Part three, tonight I am going to be joined by my sis, Trishelle. Now, let me tell y'all a bit about how I met Trishelle and then I'm going to bring her on here. So I was serving on a panel and we were doing a thing for um, wellness and it was during COVID when everything had moved to COVID and um, love glamour, Marielle, amen. I'm glad you can give an amen on that. So we had moved to COVID and so we were doing a teaching around health and really equipping people with some practical strategies on eating well and honoring their temples. And Trishelle and I were both on this virtual panel. I love it when a relationship can come offline. I really, really do. And so um, I just really admired her. I admired her work. She was cooking. And I think in that episode, she was making some um, black eyed pea fritters. So she just won her way into my heart. And she's cute too. And she loves the Lord. And so it was, and she's a mom. So it was just like a win win. Okay. And I'm always up for making a new friend. So when I, uh, Trishelle saw I was doing this series. She was like, baby, I got a story. 
because the Lord has healed her personally. Everyone who has come on this wellness series with me has their own personal journey that they have had to walk through with healing. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Trish out because tonight's Faith in Healing series, we're going to be talking about risk versus reward. What risks will we take? Are we willing to take in order to receive the reward of good health? But let me just give you a heads up so you don't drop off quick. Some risks are a bit too risky. Now, I don't know if you're the person who will take the risk and go bungee jumping. I don't know if you're the person who will um, take the risk and eat and try certain kinds of food. I don't know what kind of risk taker you are. But when it comes to wellness, sometimes we'll risk things that even may conflict with our spiritual practices as Christians. So let me go on and bring Trishel in here so she can tell y'all a little bit more about taking risks for our health. So here we're gonna we're gonna bring her, we're gonna bring her in the room here. Trishel, I'm so glad to have you joining me this evening. We're gonna bring you right in the room. Thank you all who are watching. going to join us in one second. Like I said, she's a mother. She's a women's wellness advocate. And she has a beautiful testimony of how God has healed her. Trishelle, I see you coming in there, but I don't see you. I see a background. I don't quite see you. There you are, beautiful. I told y'all to you, didn't I? Hey. <laughs> Trishel, your connection's looking a little bit. Your connection yes. is looking a little bit. Okay. 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 Oh, let me see if I can move. Let's, Let's see. Listen here, because we got a juicy story to tell them tonight. Is that, it's still a little glitchy. It's still is a that little bad? glitchy. Uh, While Trishel is working that on her connection. Yeah, listen, we ain't going to have no interruptions. We ain't going to have no interruptions. So I'm just going to give you um your formal introduction while we. And as you ladies are coming in the room, you all are in for a juicy conversation tonight as we continue with part three of our Faith in Healing series, where we are saying the things that you good Christian girls have been thinking when it comes to your healing, but maybe you have not uttered them out loud. So tonight, my guest yeah. for part three is Trisha. Right. She is also known as the Thick Vegan, because she is thick and she's cute too. And she is a women's <laughs> wellness advocate. She is a mom. She is a dedicated employee at her job. She's a beautiful wife. And she herself, the Lord has taught her divine strategy on how to reverse and prevent disease. Mm -hmm. And she done it first in her own body by obeying the Lord and making lifestyle changes. She has yes. reversed high blood pressure, free diabetes, obesity, yeah. saw her way through gestational diabetes while carrying her babies, and more. So, Trishel, would you just be a dear and share with the people a little bit of your personal wellness journey? How have you personally walked this road of healing? Yes, awesome. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Tara, for all the just the awesome introduction and <laughs> background story. I was telling my husband day, I said, Oh, I remember how me and Tara met. I had to remember because it's like it's been so long. <laughs> yes, but that's just the time of the Lord, you know, how he restores things. Mm -hmm. So there's one day with him is unto a thousand years, right? So definitely. So um with me, this has so for me, um, my journey has been one of uh, mm -hmm. What can I say? One of a lot of ups and downs, a lot of different battles and hills, a lot of um, self 
um, discovery, as well as me having learned to submit um, that much to more to the Lord and obedience. Um, like Tara was saying, um, it was initially started with through my other with my other children. I was, you know, fine. My pregnancies, it was um, just, you know, everything was okay. But with um, the last with the baby boy, mm. it seemed like things may have been laying dormant that all of a sudden came to the forefront. And I always tell people that it was nothing new. It was stuff that was laying there. Mm. And whatever happened in that pregnancy triggered to come forward. And looking back, I began to thank God because it was like, okay, that was an opportunity for me to make a change. I could have at that time, you know, got upset and be like, oh, well, you know, it's just, I'm going to see to take the medicine or it's just where it is. But no, and it could have even been well, worse where it was like, you know, I right was, there. you know, because it took me out of here. But it didn't, now. you know, so. Well, so I want to just reset uh -huh. for all of those watching. If mm -hmm. you have a health situation that crops up, our natural, mm -hmm. natural inclination may be to be upset with God, to be frustrated and to have a temper tantrum. But I want to present you with another suggestion, mm -hmm. which is what Trishel said, which is she looked at it as an opportunity to say, okay, God, what do you want to do here? And I will make some changes. Thank you so much, sis. So keep going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, get my right filter on here. I don't like that one. Okay. All right. Get that one. So. With that, so like um, Tyra mentioned, so I had the, um, what was it? So the gestational diabetes, which came up in the pregnancy, um, I had rapid, I mean, rapid weight gain. Like I gained 60 pounds within that, with that baby. That um, and okay. then after delivery. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, then after delivery, immediately, that's when other things started rising up with the high, um, high blood pressure. Um, yes, the high blood pressure, the, I mean, stroke numbers. When I say, blood, I mean, like, people think, oh, you know, no, I mean, like, they went let me out of the hospital. That's how my numbers were. And then when I got home, I had to be mandated to go on medication or to stay out of the hospital. And it was numbers like 160 over, like, like 160 over 115, stuff like that. So it was stroke level numbers. And they, I was really like to the point where I was, and scared, you know, and then they told me the next thing is that I had this condition called pseudotumor cerebri, which I had never heard. I'm like, what in the world is this? Like, and I remember all the time I'm saying, because um, in case anybody know, doesn't know me, my family, we're blended. So with my other, so my son, the first baby I had in wedlock. So my thing was, I always said to God, I, all I did was get married. I did what you wanted Michelle, me to do. Why is it going on? I did what you wanted me to do. So Why is it going on? One minute, because I don't want our viewers tonight to miss a single thing you've said. So just hold one minute, and maybe your connection will come in a little better. The connection is still glitchy, but she's already talking good, y'all. She's already talking good. So the Lord used this catalyst with the gestational diabetes to really draw some things to her attention so that she could make a change and a change for the better so that she could come in agreement with God's plan that we would be in health and prospering even as our souls prosper. And thank you all for sharing the broadcast as we continue with part three of our Faith and Healing series. And tonight we're talking about risk versus reward. And we're talking about some things that we risk, risks that we take in order to receive our healing. But we're also going to be talking about if our risks go too far. So, Michelle, mm -hmm. let's see how your connection is now, and then I want you to keep going. It's already looking a little bit bad. Yes, this is okay. I moved out the um into another right, room, yeah. so let's, let's see. Let's jump right back in. <laughs> let's jump right back in. So you had that oh. weight gain, you had the oh. gestational diabetes. So now you All you're right. like got so. this third baby, right? That was number four. Okay. That was, yeah, that was number four at the total, number four. <laughs> so with, I was, I think the last thing I said was that um, with this baby, one of the big, so I had a stroke, a stroke level, high blood pressures where they didn't want to let me go out of the hospital. 
I mean, when I say stroke levels, I mean like 160 over like 115. It was really high. And um, then I got out finally with the mandate of being on a small prescription. And then the next thing after that was I started experiencing these horrendous headaches where I would be like, I mean, I couldn't even move. I mean, dilipitating. And it wasn't even like a migraine. I had migraines. This, this was worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just like, so they thought, they thought it was connected to the blood pressure. But I was like, I don't think that's it. So one day I went to the ad doctor just to give me, while I was on my maternity leave, I went to, let me go give me some, ad, some new eyeglasses. I had some insurance to use up. Let me go to the ad doctors. So I went to four eyes just to get a regular exam. Everything was going okay. Um, I was still, still like within six weeks of postpartum. And um, they get to the end, they do this thing where they check your um, optimal nerves. And the lady, so she's like, okay, we got one more test to do, and we're going to be over after that. So the lady went to go do the opposite, look at my optical nerves and look through that test. And Tara, all I know is that's the next thing I know they was telling me, we're about to call the emergency room, need you over right now because we need you to go between. I'm like, what's going on? I mean, I, so I went in for, for a regular eye exam, mm -hmm. turned into a 12, turned into a five, six, six hour ordeal. So I had to be brushed in to the emergency room. Um, they were doing all these tests and probing me, telling me, oh, you may have to go. Um, how to get MRIs? You know, you might go blind. Um, you had all these. So they were telling me. So basically, when I found out I had a, it was a condition was called pseudo tumor cerebri. So basically, what that is is when your um the spinal the fluid in your spinal cord mm -hmm. is causing unnecessary pressure on right. your brain, as if you have a tumor. so pseudo meaning false tumor and then cerebri, which is of the brain. So. I didn't know what they was talking about. They was like, oh, and I said, where does this come from? They said, we don't know where it comes from. We just noticed that it's um, relevant and prevalent in um, childbearing age women when they gain a lot of weight. And there's no way to really get rid of it. And I said, what? So I remember just being in there, I mean, just in tears. Again, I'm still hormonal all over the place, you know, my hormones. And just thanking God, what did I do wrong? <laughs> what did I do wrong? You know, all I did mm. was get married and had a baby. Like, I did what you want me to do. What is the problem? So from there, um, I, mm -hmm. all from there, all I, I knew I wanted to, this was not God's will for me. I didn't know. So they told me I had, they put me on medication immediately. You know, they told me I had, I had to breast, I had to start breastfeeding my son because um, the medication was um, harmful for the baby. So um, that was, again, something that got, I feel like someone stripped, stripped away from me. So that was, you know, heart aching. And because you know that feeling as a mother is a bomb with the breastfeeding. So um, that I was going to get spinal taps, MRIs like twice a month, every other week. Where it was times where I couldn't even hold my son, my husband, be right there with me, and I had to lay on my back for two hours flat without get moving because I had to wait for the fluid to build back up in my spine before I could move again, where I could reverse, you know, falling out or passing out. It was just so much, and I remember just saying, "Okay." I was. I told. I told them. That I, I knew one. One thing I would definitely say is that even in that, God had already kind of equipped me, because I knew I had friend. Like I remember a friend of mine at the time. I was you know, one of my best friends, and I was like, "Great, telling me I got to go take this, uh, do these MRIs, take this stuff called um, what is it? The stuff that for the ink. Um, what is it? Uh, cause I was working MRI, but I know what it's called. What is it? Um, oh." It's basically like a you drink it, and it's an ink, and it helps them to see more in the imaging. And I remember I was telling um um I was telling her, and she was like, "Do whatever you do, do not drink that stuff, do not drink that stuff, because that's what we that's what we know gave my grandma her stroke so Her grandma had been um um immo immobile for like you know twenty years, and she was like, "Do whatever you do, do not let them take oh it's called contrast with contrast." She said, do not let them do not let them give you that contrast. Whatever you do, do not take that contrast. And I'm like, okay. So I remember I went to people and I said, I don't want to see the contrast. And they was like, well, we're not gonna be able to see. I said, well, ma'am, I'm not taking this contrast. So y'all gonna have right. to see what y'all can see. They can see it's just that it makes it easier for the doctor to see if you drink it. So I'm like, so why not I'm doing the MRIs and stuff like that? And the thing is, they could never really see anything. <laughs> but they kept on saying, we see where it's inflammation, we see where it's like some congestion there. We don't really see an old tomb. We don't see anything. So I kept on saying, okay. So I said, all right, these people keep on telling me when we be on medication. They told me I had to, I might have to be on medication the rest of my life. I had to come here and get these spinal taps at least twice a month, 
a once a month, every three months, something like that. And I said, this is not God's will for my life so at all. I know decision. it's not. So that began that a... That you were not going to live that mm -hmm. That these invasive, mm -hmm. these invasive uh, procedures right. were not going to work for you, right? And you decided you would do mm -hmm. some things differently. Mm -hmm. So tell us then what right. you decided to right. do differently. Right. Right. And the other thing, too, I would say is that I voiced that to the doctor. Okay. Because a lot of times people don't realize as a patient, you have rights, too. You don't have to accept everything that they tell you and give you. You don't have to accept it as, as you know, the bee's knees, as that's, that's the only way. You can say, I want to take a different route. Let me let me choose something else first, and I can come back to this. I, I want to choose a more holistic route and see how they work for me. So you don't have to just take the first option they give you. You know, so that's the time thing, something that we overlook as well. So after that, that's when I decided to kind of take things to my own hands. And I decided through research and prayer, um, I started on a quest, a journey to really find out how I can heal my body. On, you know, I said, you know, I said, God, I know you made these bodies and you can. So it's, I said, it's something I know it can do more than what it's doing right now. But how do I get to that? <laughs> you know, so as I was on this quest, two things happened that then came in and tried to make more um that caused more um why well, I should say trauma. So during the quest of all of this, my mother had gotten sick um within that, but her health had just started to decline more rapidly. So to the point where when I got to like kind of like that like you said, the decision point, mm -hmm. that's when things happen with her and that's when my mom passed. So during that time, also, right after that, so maybe mm -hmm. like within a two month time frame, my grandfather. So manage you, I still got all these children at home. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out my own situation I got going on. I was there in the midst of trying to help me, my siblings helping to care for my mom as well. And I was it's like God, when I, I, I did just I just mm. let me I'll say this hurt began to consume me hurt be began to consume me um and without realizing it that hurt became a gateway for things that's not of God to creep in mm. and I always say creep because the enemy is subtle and because you can be in such a place of hurting that you. Are so desperate okay, for healing so I'm that you, you don't right even there. realize you open it? yourself up to. So, so our vulnerability mm -hmm. by way of hurt can be a, an open door, mm -hmm. can be a gateway mm -hmm. um, for us to not make a sound mm -hmm. decision. My pastor says often mm -hmm. that we make decisions based That's on it. principle and not based mm -hmm. on emotion, right? So God gave us emotions as indicators, mm -hmm, but they mm -hmm. should not then dictate. So mm -hmm. emotions mm -hmm. indicate. They indicate where you are emotionally, mm -hmm. where you are spiritually, where you are mentally, mm -hmm. but our emotions should not then mm -hmm. dictate the decisions we make. So our sister Michelle is giving y'all a nugget mm -hmm. right here. To mm -hmm. be mindful of when you are vulnerable, <laughs> you do not want to make rash decisions about your health. Okay, Trishel, go ahead. So tell the people now, right. in the midst of mm -hmm. your wanting right. to um, heal your body, <laughs> but being so grieved. So you have the, um, mm -hmm. the trauma of this. Mm -hmm. gestational diabetes whole episode and then thereafter the interference with bonding in your baby those things are very traumatic and then the sudden passing of your mom and your grandfather yes. so you were in a place mentally emotionally so take us there and what mm -hmm. decision did it cause you mm -hmm. to make go ahead yeah so the place that I was at was just over overwhelmed and just burdened with, with hurt and despair of like, okay, these are like, mm -hmm. I, and then I remember mm -hmm. I got, it's also another thing that came up later on was anger. Anger of 
like, what do you really want me to do? Now? Like, mm-hmm. why all this? I I've done all the things you called me to do, and I'm still seeing this. I'm still seeing these things happen. Yeah, my health still ain't getting no, like this is causing my health. I feel like to go backwards. <laughs> you know, said to regret. Mm-hmm. So because I just wanted to feel better, I just wanted to feel better so then I start looking for things. I start looking for stuff, and I'm gonna just be 100% honest with you too. So I, I was in church and I had a ministry I was involved with and I was active in that ministry. And I'm going to say this and it is where it is. We as believers have to be, when we see somebody going down a certain path, we have to have the courage to mm-hmm. pull them up and let them know this is a slippery slope you're going down. And regardless of if they are something or not in our business, but we have to have a courage about us a God encouraged to tell, let them know when they, when you see them going down their way, because I, so I started, you know, I, I, God was bringing this up back to me today because I was like, what am I going to say? How do I convey this to the people, Lord? And I remember the first thing that I did was, because being in the um, vegan wellness um, community, a lot of times times stuff crosses over. You okay. had to be very yeah, okay. conscientious and very aware. We're about to of get into it, it, okay? <laughs> so I've already told y'all, as a certified natural health professional, yeah. I have studied and, all the modalities, all right? Mm-hmm. So whether we're talking um, traditional Chinese mm-hmm. medicine mm-hmm. or Reiki, I have studied them. I've studied them, okay? I've studied them mm-hmm. like I study and read any other book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we have mm-hmm. to know when the mm-hmm. belief systems, mm-hmm. practices yeah. are so, in alignment mm-hmm. or not in alignment with our profession of faith. And then if you roll in certain circles, mm-hmm. if you're in the um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. crunchy, wellness, That's it. whole foods, vegan, alkaline community, there are a lot mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. Um, practices. <laughs> yeah beliefs which may be contrary to others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead, Christian. Go ahead. Very contrary. That's the word, contrary. And so <laughs> and so um um so I had began to know I got I was you know I be, as I began to grow in that area as a and, and solid and uh, what's the word solidified my name and in that industry, I became I began to know other people as well, and some of them became commonplace. So the first thing that I remember the Lord bringing back to my mind today was that. So within all of this going on, and I, I've been going and I told God, I, said, I just want to get away for a minute. And I told my husband, I said, Do I just want to get away for a minute? I need to get some, you know, the baby, the kids were still very young at that time, you know, and I just I said I need to get clear my mind because that's just how overwhelmed I felt and consumed with all this grief and hurt. And I went to this retreat, and the retreat was held by someone who I deemed, you know, um, I held in high regard within the, you know, the natural healing community and, the, um, you know, veganism and stuff like that. I had went to her practice a couple of mm-hmm. times, you know, and she's a natural path, natural, how you put it? I think it's a natural path doctor. And, um, but there were some clear signs. <laughs> That are faced <laughs> in that line, <laughs> you know. But because of where I was mentally and spiritually, and it hurts, and that desperation to want to you feel better, to take I kind of ignored those flags. So that you know, that's the way, that's the word right there. The risk, the risk. Because I said, okay, God, you know, it's it's okay, you know, you got me. But I need to feel better more than this right here. I can overlook this for a moment. I need to get to what I need to. I just need to get. I need to feel better. I need to feel like some this this what I'm feeling ain't ain't right. So I need I want I want rid of this. So I went on that retreat. Um, it was the the out. I'm gonna say like this outline of it was beautiful. That it, it was a nice up in the mountains stuff like that. However, mm-hmm. in going to that, I opened myself up. I opened myself to things that were not a god of God. You know. Um, it was other and think about it. What made me again, like I say, Satan is subtle. What made me mm-hmm. feel like it was okay was because it was other professed believers there as well. 
there were other professed believers there as well. And a lot of them, you know, I remember, um, and they were always a little older than me. And um, the woman, mm-hmm. all of them, when I had a chance to talk to all of them, all of them mm-hmm. were in that same place of her. <laughs> and that's <what> great. <laughs> so we, so it's like, okay, looking back now, I can see that, but it's like, that's what was going on. We all just had become so, because she, because I guess she calls herself, I'm going to say the common name that you hear nowadays, that people think it's just, oh, it's just, that's just, that's what they call themselves. Healer. Amen. No, 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 no. Again, not a healer. In the back He's a room. healer. <laughs> so, I'm not a healer, okay? <laughs> He you healer. are not the, to be a he healer, is the, but we know the healer with I'm not uppercase eight. He said, mm-hmm. I am your God, the which he lived thee. All right. right. His name oh. is Rafa, mm-hmm. the God mm-hmm. which healed so, you. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the names Rafa. of Jesus is mm-hmm. physician. Mm-hmm. All right. The, the great position and I yes, believe the that's um, mm-hmm. is the word is the Greek word for the great physician so let us be very mindful mm. when we go mm-hmm. dancing on these slippery slopes mm-hmm. <laughs> of where and that's the what I'm saying mm-hmm. where the dancing <laughs> is coming from whether it's at the hands <laughs> of a lowercase h healer yeah, that's With it. the uppercase H healer. Go ahead, Trishel. Now, come on. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, just, yeah, because, and, you know, so just to, you know, move through that. So I, I went to that, and I feel like, and I know Tara, from a, a matter of fact, that was when the gate was open. Because the the Bible say that on the say he only needs you know um but he only needs um mm-hmm. he only needs a, a small mm-hmm. a small way in he doesn't need a big act. so that was the way so the hurt was the Im- initial cause and then that was the right the thing and that the caused that right? gave him the the, the, the opportunity the to come permission. on in so what gave and the permission that's the word what permission portals, permission um what entry points are we opening. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. In our desperation for healing. All right. Mm-hmm. So that's viewers who are watching. I'm posing mm-hmm. that question to mm-hmm. you because I want that to be one of your takeaways from tonight's discussion. Is in our desperation for healing, mm-hmm. what risks mm-hmm. are we willing to take? What portals, gateways, access are we going to allow in order to pursue? this healing keep going sister mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so um so from there you know when i came back you know it was just more so you know so the um I, and i was being very candid with you guys you know because i know that candid this can my candor is what will bring the because i've been delivered from it all so i can speak on it Okay, and I know that a lot of times people want to sugarcoat or um, dance around certain topics, but that's not what this is because I've, I've been in, I've done it. So I began to mess with jewels, I mean stones. I began to um, tap into yoga. And that, is, and that is a big one for the, for the body of Christ. Y'all don't, y'all don't let, let nobody mess with y'all yoga. Let me tell you something. Yoga is a whole, is a whole religion. Okay, it's a whole thing. <laughs> and y'all be fighting more for that yoga. Y'all be fighting for Jesus because yoga. Yeah. <laughs> if you look it up, the Hindus that is their yeah. form of worship. That is how they practice to their gods. So every pose you doing, oh, that's that's they know that's their god. That's who that's who they worship. It ain't no exercise. It's a religion. It's a whole practice. <laughs> But you gonna get mad at me because I said, "Oh, what's your stretching? No, it ain't stretching. A uh, stretch is you just go and stretch. stretching. It ain't yoga. It's two different things. I'm a, I stretch all the time. I'm not working out with my workout, but I'm not practicing yoga. Where, I don't do yoga moves. It's slippery, right? It's it's and um. Tired. They didn't even wait a minute. Tired. They didn't even head. Well, they didn't name the yoga. 
Christian yoga. <laughs> Because because this, I this didn't is, see um, that. I, I, I will say that. this though: it's not easy for people to discern the difference because the enemy is so crafty that he takes something that is good, converts it, it to is. evil, and then tries to repackage it as good. So it gets very, very convoluted. Mm -hmm. Like in the case of the Christian, That's what I'm saying. right? So we know mm -hmm. God is the maker of heaven and mm -hmm. earth that the crystals come from yeah. the earth, right? So, you know, are crystals inherently bad? That's it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. No, because they're God's creation. And in fact, in the Bible, no. there were high priests, yeah. right? And the high priests who had responsibility yep, for entering the mm -hmm. most holy mm -hmm. of holy places. And as they did that, in fact, they wore yep. Yep. gems, Crystal mm -hmm. stones on their breastplate to represent yep. you and I, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. But here's on where, their where the issue different is, tribes. is yep, when different we're tribes. manipulating mm -hmm. stones, words, moves, you mm -hmm. know, whatever mm -hmm. it is, to take the place of God, mm -hmm. to be the power of God. And we know that the power that God gave mm -hmm. us at work in us is the and Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. all right? So it's not external, inanimate objects yes. mm -hmm. that hold power, but it is when that Jesus left, it. he the said, I'm going to leave you mm -hmm. with a comforter. And that power at work in us is by way of the Holy Spirit. Yes. He said, no, not her yoga. Oh. Uh, yes, ma'am. Katrina <laughs> says good versus evil, right? So we can take a thing that it's okay. is seemingly good in its creation and it can be perverted, right? So we have to mm -hmm. look at intent. We also have to be knowledgeable mm -hmm. and, um, and educate ourselves. You know, um, I had mm -hmm. a conversation with my college student about burning sage mm -hmm. and my kids my kids joke with me because everything mm -hmm. they ever say always goes oh that's the devil you know so that you know then they think it's a joke but really um you know i had to say to inherently in and of itself right. burning a plant or a weed or, or whatever it is you're burning i mean it's, it's neither good nor bad it's neither good nor evil but it's the intent you know, do I think that um, mm -hmm. burning mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is going mm -hmm. to necessarily clear the atmosphere or get rid of evil spirits? I mean, all I have to do as a believer is just say in Jesus' name. You know, I, I mean, that's where this is where the Come on, power Jesus. lies, according to the Come Holy Spirit on, at work. It's not resting it's in the thinking. object mm -hmm. or the thing for the power. That's where I feel like the mm -hmm. believers dance on the slippery. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the risks. So you were sharing some of the risks. And that's it. You take it. So you've seen the healer. Um, you got some crystals. What are the risks <laughs> are we taking? Thank you, Arlene, for your yes and amen. <laughs> I said this is no good. What you said, what I do with the crystals? What you no say, Tara? And then the healer, and then the crystals. Were there any other slippery slopes you were sliding on? Okay, yes to the yoga. Any other? Oh, no, I said yes to the yoga. Because I'm a, cause what I did was, again, like you just said, I said, I'm going to go in here. I'm not going to do what they do. I'm not going to do the chant. You know, I'm a I'm gonna say scripture when I do man. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna okay. they say meditate on this. I'm gonna meditate on the word of God when I'm doing my stretches. You know, <laughs> so that so it's a prime mm -hmm. example. What you just said, how we try to we like you, we clean. We try to clean up mm -hmm. what you know is not even meant for us to tamper with in the first place. You know, we we want to come in and take it and try to make it something that God never intended for us to even touch. You know, and um. Uh, what was I getting ready to say? You know, you were saying how we got to be aware yes. and mindful, but the word of God said we should be sober and vigilant. Be sober and vigilant. We got to be aware, you know. We and, and that's why I say that those hurts, you know, the, the, the um, grief, all things, pain, those things could be gateways because, like you said, your vulnerability at that moment, at those times, the old girl, the tarot card, read, no, Lord, that's a big one. Like, I've I didn't had people I know, like, 
And then I'm telling you, that's something I see. I seen two times that because he would think, I think it's a young lady probably said that's what she made with it. Um, when she said that good, good and evil, it was that a lot of times because yeah. it's, they're not doing nothing bad or it's they not they good right. people or they're not doing nothing bad. Right? They think it's okay. You know, I've had conversations with somebody close to, that's close to my sister to tell her like, no, I don't think so. Right. Absolutely not. That, but that's a trick of the enemy to lure you in. You know, to seem like you know because it's not well, so called good. It's not doing anything wrong. That, that it's not okay. Everything that's permissible. Okay. Is beneficial, okay? Just because it's permissible, just because there you go. it's okay, yeah, doesn't awful. mean it's mm -hmm. beneficial mm -hmm. to your person. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's beneficial mm -hmm. to your walk. Doesn't mean it's beneficial yeah. to your right. healing. And mm -hmm. again, this is why we have to mm -hmm. defer to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who will guide us and lead us into all truth. That's one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to guide us into truth. So the Bible tells us to walk and have mm -hmm. the righteousness for his namesake, right? And so it is the Lord who's going to order those steps mm -hmm. so that we're walking mm -hmm. in paths of righteousness. And when mm -hmm. we stray mm -hmm. off the path of righteousness, then the Lord is going to bring mm -hmm. us in. Doc, thank you for dropping that verse in there for us. So we have to be very mindful to be walking in those paths and when we try to stray or get diverted or our attention gets drawn away because our attention oh man we're, sometimes we're like children like we really need blindfold because our attention can be fleeting mm -hmm. especially if we're mm -hmm. vulnerable yeah go, go ahead for shout jump in mm-hmm 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 oh so, um, I oh, see some questions on here. Now. I guess we'll come you back to that. Um, but um, how did you come to the place of combining okay. wellness with a Christian perspective? And we'll both answer that. And thank you, Ariel, for asking that question. That is so good. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to both answer that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and answer mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so for first of all, hey Ariel. Um <laughs> so yeah, but I mean the the clear cut answer is that once I opened my word, <laughs> once I stopped, you know, allowing hurt to lead me and stop, you know, um like um Tara said, letting my emotions, you know, rule me and actually come to a place where I submitted, like I said in the beginning, submitted to um God and his will to understand that Nothing that I'm seeing these people that I was trying to nothing that I saw mm. these people doing that was was um, conforms to his word was foreign to him, you know. And I had to truly let my stop being angry because I was angry at God. So because I was mad at him, I didn't want to want to see nothing that he had to tell me. Or well, I didn't think what he told was going to be telling me was going to be good enough or that it was going to really work because I felt like I did what he wanted me to do and it was and the stuff this stuff was still happening. So let me try mm. some without really saying it different alternative measures but once those that healing in my soul came I actually you know did go through some um um a period where i went through you know um i had to get some some praying you know mm -hmm. and I had to come to the realization that i was you know under demonic oppression not not um possessed but oppression but as a believer as a um uh, i'm saved so you know you can't be demonically um but you can be oppressed, divinely oppressed versus being possessed. And I was allowing, I opened up certain pools. And so, so once I came to that realization and actually got back in submission with the word of God and understanding and seeing that everything that I needed, all my healing was within him and in his word. And even then I see when I'm talking to my, um, I have foundational scriptures that I stand on, um, that I have for my business, that I have for myself, that I let people know that, you know, this yeah. is nothing new under the sun. He is he is the Lord God that healeth us. He he's he is the Jehovah. He is Jehovah. He is not it's nothing that is that anybody's doing to call themselves to be a professed healer, to call themselves, you know, to be the um they 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 taking these herbs. God created these herbs and he created them for us to consume what he said in in um Genesis for us to create, to eat these herbs. And so I'm like, why am I acting like these people doing something so new and so amazing and so fantastic? But he said, number what God already told me I had the power to do it for myself. 
But it was once I came off of that anger and that hurts and was able to see and the and the um what's the word? The scales were taken off of my ass that I was able to see that there to combine is. the two, it wasn't there even is. a combination. Now, it was already there. Was <laughs> it was already to, um, Ariel's question. So thank you for asking that again. Um, how we got to the place of combining wellness and, yeah, thank you. Um, and our faith. And wellness is our faith, right? Um, Jesus died mm -hmm. and gave up his life so that mm -hmm. we could have mm -hmm. life and life to the full. And um, we, we're very familiar with the word Zoe for life in the Greek. But there's also a word for life, which is El Hey. And it's yes. H A Y. And um, it, it, it connotates mm. an, an image of things being lush and vibrant and healthy and alive. And that's the kind of life that God, this is what he said, Jesus, mm. in John 10 10. That he came that we might have life and have it to mm -hmm. the full. Mm -hmm. And so for me personally, um, over 10 years ago, God called me to the wellness space. I didn't call myself here. God called me to this space. And so I said, yes, Lord. And mm -hmm. it also mm -hmm. um, was mm -hmm. probably born out of my own need mm -hmm. for holistic healing. So not only healing of the physical body, but also healing mm -hmm. of the mind and of the soul. And so just walking that road for myself, right. walking through childhood trauma, walking through physical ailment, I myself um, have dealt with an autoimmune disorder for the last 20 plus years. So walking through with that, I've also battle a chronic like dental issue that's been going on i've been dealing with bone loss since i was 14. um so and walking through my own healing journey the lord mm. said i've called you to this space because we as kingdom citizens who it is our birthright mm -hmm. to walk in divine healing because mm -hmm. every infirmity was already paid for mm -hmm. on the cross mm -hmm. of calvary right so we have a divine birthright to All have, right. and the Lord said, mm -hmm. I am calling mm -hmm. you to help my people to possess what is rightfully there. So also led me then by way of training area. Mm -hmm. so, yes, so you have mm -hmm. to call, right? Then for over 10 years, I spent on the backside mm -hmm. of the mountain with the Lord in my Bible. I wanted to go to school for natural health, and the Lord would not allow me to. He said, mm -hmm. I am your teacher. You're going to get your PhD with me, and then I wow. will release you to go back and study. So it was only during COVID that I then wanted to go back to school. I wanted on, to go to school so bad, and only because, not mm -hmm. because I didn't have the knowledge, because the Lord had me in here studying, but I wanted it for approval, right? Yeah. So the Lord, they're not going to give you permission to do stuff if your motive and intention is wrong. I, my mm. motive was not right. I just wanted to go to school so I could be approved by man. But the Lord said, I get mm -hmm. your, stamp, your stamp of approval is from me. I'm mm -hmm. your professor. That's what the Lord told me. I'm your professor. You learn directly from me. You got the one on one. <laughs> oh, yes. And he gave me yes. like the accelerated yes. class. Y'all ever take a summer class in college and you have an accelerated oh, class? See, when you're obedient to the Lord, he puts you on the accelerated course. You're on the fast track, okay? You're getting your information um, real time. Yes. Right, yes. real time from him. So that area, <laughs> thank you for, for asking, mm -hmm. is what called me into this healing space. And as a believer, mm -hmm. it is our birthright. It is our right to walk mm -hmm. in divine health. But I know that's contrary to mm -hmm. what we see a lot. I mean, even, you know, if we think of images of being in a fellowship hall in a yeah. church and we got like big mama in them cooking, you know, mm -hmm. and it could be some thick aunties too. Y'all know your thick aunties <laughs> and they frying the chicken right. and they making potato salad. And God bless all our, God bless all the aunties in the fellowship hall mm -hmm. doing the cooking and putting out the cookies and the cakes and all that. But there is a better mm -hmm. way, okay? The Lord mm -hmm. did open that thing up in the beginning in Genesis one twenty nine, when we should actually be eating for yep. our 
food. These shall be to you for food in Genesis 1.29. And then he yeah. wraps it up at the end of the book in Revelation 22.2, telling you that the leaves on the trees are for the healing yes. of the nations. Yes. Yes. <laughs> ah, one of my favorite ones. I just, I just found that scripture this year. That was one of my favorite ones. I said, come on, you just keep on affirming and affirming and affirming. <laughs> and Dr. Petra, you yes. know, as the Lord leads, right? You're going to talk about your God. We've got my yes. good friend on here, Dr. Colette. So I'm it's glad like that it. our health practitioners are in here just tuning into this conversation. We're so grateful to God that he's calling people. Yes, that he's calling our practitioners. Yes, hey, doctor. These, um, the healing space so that God's people can be healed, so that we can walk in divine healing and divine wholeness. So, Trisha, before mm -hmm. we wrap up, what last mm -hmm, bit mm -hmm. do you want to share with the people? What last nugget do you want to leave the people with so that we can understand the risk versus reward that we can have discernment and they know how to navigate the slippery slope? Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> what would I say? I would wrap it up by saying don't allow what you see with your physical eye to deter you from what God already promised you because things are already moving and things are always moving in the spirit realm and that's something I've come to realize, come to realize too is that things are always moving in the spirit realm and just because we don't see it on this side at this moment does not mean things are not progressing and I say, I know I've made posts about it. I've said it often and stuff and things that I've, labs I've done, things, um, seminars I've taught is that um, healing is, it, it, I say this in a um, surface, in a different level, you know, but healing isn't linear. Like, so don't think it's because it's not one straight line or it didn't go just like the way you wanted it to go like that. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. And so don't get discouraged because it's not happening in the time frame you want it to happen. Because even though you may not be able to see the so-called progress, it's still progress that is happening. Whether it's in the spirit and in the physical, it just hasn't um, made its way to the point where you can see it just yet. So don't be discouraged. Don't allow what you see in the physical to disturb you to deter you from continuing your journey of pursuing and keep and oh seek ye first the kingdom of God. <laughs> seek ye first the kingdom of God in all their ways and all things shall be added unto you. If I would at keep that at the forefront in all of your seeking and your whole quest of healing and you know getting better. Keep him first. Do not allow hurt and pain to distract Amen. you and deter you to go down a path that is that is a slippery slope. Because I've been there, I've been there, and it's more, it's more, it's a harder fight to get mm. out of it for than those it is to just stay just joined us, on the we course. We have had a juicy conversation for almost the last hour. So once this post hits my page, y'all gonna have to go and catch the replay because we're talking all the <laughs> things about taking certain <laughs> risks, yeah. opening up gateways and portals in this pursuit of our mm -hmm. healing. And our sister Shell has just mm -hmm. dropped us with some nuggets that you seek the kingdom yes. first to be mindful that healing is not linear. It's not going to be a straight line. Okay. It may have some, um, some divots, some turns, some highs and some lows, mm -hmm. but we know that we have already mm -hmm. received our healing. Every infirmity has already been paid for on the cross at Calvary. Yeah. So, Trishel, can you tell the people on who, who may not know you how they can find you and where to follow you? Oh, yes. Oh, hey, Doc. Okay, sure, Dr. Hey, um, how you say it? Um, we'd, love to, we'd love to continue the conversation. Katrina. So yes, it's about us. Come, come on, Dr. Katrina. Yes, my... Yes, so you can follow me right now over on Instagram right here or at the underscore thick underscore vegan. Uh, you can follow me on my... You can catch all my details, things that I do, um, my services that I offer at my website, 
Uh, you can go to bit.ly forward slash work with Trishel, bit.ly forward slash work with Trishel, or click the link right here in my bio on Instagram. And I'm on Facebook at The Big Vegan. <laughs> and I'm on TikTok at The Big Vegan. So follow me on all those different platforms. I'm always talking things about wellness, um, prevention, and within the vegan, I had to do within a vegan lifestyle. And I am, I just, I let me tell you, I'm truly in love with what I'm doing. And it's taken me some time. It's, it's been a journey. It's been taking me some time to get here. But I truly am loving it. And I even see where God's taking me further within it. And you know, I'll be working with you soon, two Let times. That's the next it, level I decided Let's I'm going to it, with this alkaline. <laughs> so, you and know, see, it's just. And that's another story. So growing, when I told Michelle, I said, look now, I know you're going to do some of this stuff with the alkaline. Don't you go do yeah. dipping in that community. You mm -hmm. be careful. You be careful. You yeah, she did. Me. I don't know how you're weeding. I don't know how you're going through the weeds. Right. So right. So but you okay. see what I'm saying? How they, you got to separate. <laughs> yeah. But you see what I'm saying? But that right there is God's provision is, 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 as well. Because he already knew he was calling me. I think I was telling you before how it's been made like a, a battle of the past maybe year or so. The admin struck battling with knowing her and I've been supposed to be going to that. But like I know it's already over there because I've seen it before a little bit in the early stages. But him, he already put you in place for me to come to to do it in the way that is like Ariel was asking earlier, yes. and do it in a way that aligns Amen. with his belief, Amen. with his our, our faith in him. Because it ain't gotta be all that other stuff. It ain't gotta be all that. It ain't yes, gotta be all that. Indeed. You know, Ariel, all Ariel, the other stuff. It don't. <laughs> for those who just joined, once this hit the page, y'all be sure to watch the broadcast. We have spent the last hour talking about all things faith and healing. When we take certain risks with portals and gateways, mm -hmm. we open. Y'all know where to find my girl, the underscore thick underscore vegan. Mm -hmm. Not only is she the thick vegan, she's the cute vegan. Not only is she the cute vegan, but she is one who has no. implemented these principles <laughs> and has used that to reverse disease and to educate yes. others on how to prevent disease. And I'm so mm -hmm. proud of her. I'm so happy to call her sister in yeah. friend. Michelle, thank I you love God. you. Great hanging out with you tonight. And thank yeah. you for joining us for the Faith and Healing yes. Series. Yes, let me too, Tara. I'm so excited. We I feel like I'm a superstar on here. We're <laughs> just two girls after God's own heart. And he has given us a mandate yes. to declare and proclaim his yes. name. And that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and y'all know this, but Tara, Tara is one of my mom's inspirations. Oh, She's one of my mom's inspirations. Thank like, you, Dr. She Michelle. really is. <laughs> we look forward to getting to know you better, okay? So to all of our viewers tonight, thank you for being a dear. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Yes. As always, it is my prayer that you have been inspired to live fully in the mind, in the body, and in the spirit. So we'll be catching up with y'all soon. God bless and take care. Yes. All righty. Bye-bye.